Hello, this is Hoffman Traffel Production with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I want to show you how you can float objects in an ocean-like atmosphere or setting using this add-on. But before I do that, I want to just give out a special thanks to um, Raphael617 or 6117. Uh, because this person, I don't know if it's male or female, but they've been just supporting from the beginning, just really looking at all the videos and commenting them and commenting on the videos. And I just want to say thanks to you, Raphael, for all your support. I really appreciate it, man, or sister. But uh, thanks a lot. And uh, all the others of you who have been watching the videos, I appreciate you guys also, too. Uh, but let's get back to uh, the video. Uh, for this add-on, it's also an add-on you have to pay for, but, you know, it's, it's uh, not overly expensive. It's just $3. And it's for Blender 3.4. I think they've made versions for, uh, I'm thinking 2.8, um, 2.9, and 3.0 series, but don't quote me on that. I'll leave a link of it in the description below the video so you can check it out. And I uh, use it, but it's very, very direct, very, very simple to use. And to install this, to the same process. Go to Edit, click on Edit, Preferences, Install, navigate to where you've downloaded it. Click on Install Add-on. And after you've done that, let's type it in. I've already done that myself. Floatify, put a check in the box, and it's activated. And it is right there. Now we're just going to see how it works with the cube just to you know give you an idea of how it works. Let's pull the cube up on the z-axis and we're going to click on create ocean and it adds an ocean modifier with this grid in the middle and then we're going to click on our cube and click on realize object and it has uh, parameters for rotation and location uh, but from what I've seen it's sometimes best to leave this as it is in the default settings. So I've tried to kind of use this sometimes. And it gives you some glitchy effects on your object that's floating in the ocean. And then to see it in action, you have to click on the ocean modifier. Click on the modifier. So let's pull this out. Let's expand this a bit. And manipulate the ocean through the time. You can see the cube is moving up and down which is cool. And in order to move your object from point A, so to speak, to point B, or move it across the ocean, you click on this grid. Sometimes it's hard to click on. There we go. And you can move it back and forth like this. If you click on your object and try to move it, it's not going to move. you got to click on that grid and have it move like that. Now, since we know the basic principles of the add-on, let's try it with a more complex model which would be Suzanne this is just a cube so you know you really can't uh, test the add-on just with the cube so let's go to Suzanne let's create a new scene general don't save with the cube selected let's press delete on our keyboard shift a go up to mesh apply the monkey click on the move gizmo and drag it up on the z-axis left click on and uh, drag on the uh, the axis on this blur out to pull it up a little bit. Press 1 on our keyboard to go into the front view. And with the monkey selected, click on our uh, modifier stack here. And we'll add the subdivision surface modifier to make it a little bit more smooth. And turn up the levels to 2 by clicking on that arrow. Click on this drop down and press apply. And we have Suzanne. Now let's press 1 again to go into the front view. Now we're going to pull out our add on again. Left click on our add on, create ocean, and then we're going to click on Suzanne and realize object. It's going to place her in the ocean. I place her backwards. You can rotate her, I think, but we'll just leave that as it is. You can rotate her by clicking on this grid and rotating the grid, and that will rotate her, but let's leave it as it is. And let's uh, click on our ocean again and click on time because I noticed something with this. Uh, the object in the water, it doesn't only bob the object up and down, but it gives it um, different kind of movements in the water to make it more realistic in terms of it actually simulating an object floating in water. 
And if you look at Suzanne, you'll see she'll kind of tilt from side to side as I uh, change the timing. You see how she tilts? She kind of bobs up and down in the water. And, that, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, you saw that? That's, that's really, really nice. Now we're going to animate this to see how it looks when we move her from point A to point B or across the water as the water is moving. So we're going to drag this up and we're going to, let's click on the grid here first. And this again, it's kind of hard to click on that sometimes. And we're going to pull the grid on the uh, Y axis, left click and drag on the green arrow, pull it over. And we're going to click on the record icon, record some motion there. Left click on that and click on that green arrow again to give us some uh, a keyframe, so to speak. And then we have our keyframe there. We're going to go up to 100, left click on 100. Let's pull this down a little bit more. We're going to drag her across the water. So we have our keyframe from 0 to 100. And we're going to keep our timeline from 1 or 0 to 100. Let's click on the end part and type in 100 here. Enter. That way she stops right there. Let's turn off our recording. And then go back to the beginning to start off from the beginning. Let's click on our ocean. And in order to manipulate the ocean, uh, let's go back to 1. Click in there. Type in 1. Enter. To manipulate the ocean or have the ocean move or animate the ocean, just click on this dot. And then you have a keyframe there. Let's go to the end by clicking on this uh, icon here. Left click on that. It takes us all the way to the end of our animation. And we're going to crank this up to 10. Enter. And click on that uh, empty, I'm going to call that a diamond. Let's go back to the beginning. And let's minimize this so we can see Suzanne. Let's turn off some of these parameters here. So we can see her actually in, in action in the water. And click play. And there you go. And she's actually floating in the water. Now this is one cool add-on. It's simple, easy to use, and straightforward. And that's today's Blender Quick Tip, how to float objects in water using the Floatify add-on. And once again, thank you guys who have been watching the videos and thank you guys who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now, and those of you who are subscribing in the future. And I hope this video was helpful for you all who have been watching. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.